Hi guys, this is another Frick Limit here from the Octagon again. I will be recording another game of Warhammer 40k Conquest this time, and now of Jester's Magic Tournament. I will be playing against Eric Raywood. Uh, we have been preparing to the final few days, and uh, I was thinking Eric may be my or uh, Zen on Elders. However, as you see that we will be having a mirror match against Celestines. So we both choose the same warlord. Uh, it could be really uh, interesting. Uh, I do believe that I'll take a slight I'm thinking about what I'm going to be playing, and uh, uh, I've wrapped up this deck around a new pledge card. Munitorum support. Uh, this uh, support for one cost uh, deployed straight as first remove um, in the game uh, allows me to add the five uh, attachments from the card collection onto the support and then once per round I can really deploy the attachment to one of my units. Uh, the attachments you have is the place uh, M35 Galaxy last gun. That's plus one attack, plus one HP, and uh, it goes back in a hand whenever the unit leaves play. Hotshot last pistol, plus two attack. Uh, bodyguard uh, moves one damage to that unit uh, whenever the other unit uh, receives the damage on the planet. Uh, seal of the Ebon Chalice, plus one HP, and Sanctified Bolter. I think this is the most important card in that collection. Sanctify Bolter uh, gives you plus one HP, plus one attack, but also uh, you receive two fate out icons uh, whenever the range, uh, ranged skirmish begins on the planet. So uh, this uh, support gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, those cards, they go from the collection, so you don't need to really include them in the deck. And you can focus in your build on something more important. So. Uh, you can really add some value to your attack or HP uh, whenever you want. Uh, it gives you flexibility and I, I, I'm about to try uh, this here today. It's worth mentioning that not only I am uh, using this support for the first time, but also I'm actually playing a Saint Celestine for the first time in my life as well. So it's a risky play to, to, to go with something uh, completely new, uh, in especially in the final. But uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about it and I've, I, I'm pretty sure that I've, uh, I've maximized the, the effects and all the events that I have in my deck are actually built really well. There's a lot of synergy. Uh, and I'm just, you know, playing to see how it's going to work. So let's start uh, without delaying it anymore. It's initiative for Eric Raywood, so he will be deploying first. I did the mulligan before, so we already, uh, uh, after making the decision, and his first deploy is going to be Heavy Flamer Retributor. That's going to go in plan number one, three attack, two HP, uh, two command icons. So uh, this... Um, this unit deals one damage uh, to after its attack uh, equal the amount of fate icons it has on itself. So, uh, really good offensive units. Uh, my first deployment needs to be the pledge card, the Minotaurium support. So I will need to add uh, create those cards. So M thirty five. That's going to be the first card. The hot shot last gun. Uh, it's going to be the second. Um, that's two offensive attachments. One cost. One cost. The third one's going to be the bodyguard. Uh, yep. Yeah. So let's put it here as well. Mm, the fourth one is the Ebon of the Chalice. So that's uh, yeah, that's here. And the last one, the most important one, and the one I'm waiting for really, is the um, Sanctified Bolter. So I'll let just add it right on top. That's a one cost as well. So. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities uh, straight away and no information given uh, back to my opponent so really okay playing good start uh, still six resources you can see I have only two units in my hand so our uh, hero beam and fanatical sister repentia uh, that's only two command hammers so not really great in command game his second deployment is the sanctified bolter as well so yeah that's the whole beauty of playing the mirror games you can really uh, just, you know, put the same cards on the table uh, all over. So he's running the idea as well. I think he liked it. So the he's going to get the two fate icons straight away whenever the range skirmish kind of starts. Uh, that's pretty cool. On this, Retributor makes him 4 free. My next movement is going to be to put the uh, signature support in play. Now, I'm really lucky to have that support uh, on the very beginning. Uh, the support is really cool. It gives you plus 2 HP to your Warlord whenever your Warlord is on the first planet. But most importantly, it reacts whenever the 
I'll put in the wins to battle. Uh, you can rally or search your six cards for the unit and then add it to your hand. Uh, also, you place two fight icons among army units you control. So, uh, it actually gives me a uh, some boost after the opponent wins the battle. So, uh, it kind of really gives you the opposition uh, and allows you to, to really survive if you lose in the game. Uh, quite cool. I'm happy about that. It's zero cost, so I'm not really wasting the resources. I still have six. I can deploy uh, both my units and then play the event. Um, I didn't give any information away uh, for Eric so far, so only support. So if you look at the board, there's a free red uh, icon straight away. That's first victory condition on plan number three. And then the next uh, one in line is actually all down to planet number five. We're red, all blue uh, as well. So, um, interesting. I have here a Milko's intervention. So, uh, this is really cool. After you combat round begins with the planet, commit your warlord to that planet and place two fate icons on it. Uh, you can uh, uh, also put some guidesmen, tokens if you want, but uh, you need to commit. So, that's a tricky card. It allows you to recommit with your warlord and uh, boost uh, yourself with some fate icons to uh, possibly add, to possibly use the ability of the warlord itself. So yeah, um, we will see. Uh, waiting for the Eric now for his next deployment. Uh, not sure what he will like to do. He already committed heavily on the first planet, so I will need to think with that sanctified bolter, if I could really do anything here, I think noble deed and uh, sister repent here, uh, uh, that was my plan from the beginning. Uh, as you can imagine, noble deed can be really used to maximize the warlord effect. I could summon for the fate icons one of the units into the battle, uh, do the attack, and then strike with the noble deed again. Uh, there's deployment, Zealous Cantus uh, from Eric, and he. It's placing it on plan number one. Okay, so again, very aggressive deployment on the first planet. So uh, absolutely overcommitting himself to to just get that uh, first red icon with his initiative. He's gonna uh, really try to bully me and get the nearest victory condition. Uh, that's okay. Uh, really, now uh, Zealous Cant is obviously a cool card. Whenever the Ecclesiarchy. Uh, card leaves the game, uh, adds the one fate icon on uh, the army unit, so on the unit, so really uh, cool. Um, again, 3-3 free, free, uh, units, that's already too strong uh, fighting units on plan number, plan number one. I need to reconsider any deployment right now, as I could really deal with the single uh, heavy flamer, uh, I may to really struggle right now to even think that I'm able to be close to overcome. Uh, I have the Hellarding uh, Herubim, uh, that unit uh, receives the one fate icon whenever your warlord commits to the planet, and then you may move uh, that unit onto the, uh, the ascent planet to your warlord. So it gives you kind of a lot of flexibility in the command game. You could really uh, just target uh, any planet to the right or left of your warlord to, to get the uh, bonus in the economy. Uh, but also, it could really move into the battle. Uh, it's 2 2, so it's not a strong unit. Fanatical Sister Repentia yeah, is 4 2, and it doubles the fate icons on it. So, uh, really, mm, not much that I could play off. And I need to think here. He already spent all the resources on plan number one. He's not going to get a lot of command. Uh, that first planet is definitely his. I might go there with the Warlord, uh, but I'm not sure if I really want to do this. Um, however, I definitely gonna deploy two units on two different planets and then go with the Warlord on the third. So I might just to try to get as much as command as possible from this situation and think that I will definitely give away the first um, first red icon. Um, miraculous intervention, that's something that I made to think about to move the Warlord and just add the Fate Icons, but not right now. I do not have even more units that I could pull off with my Warlord. So I'm going to play the Herobim, and this is going to go on planet number four. Now, uh, planet number four, um, purely because it's a really great target for him to, to really play two cards. But also, uh, I intend to go with my Warlord to plan number three. So if he's going to go for plan number four, 
then I might have put the two uh, Chimera tokens from the ability of player number three. Uh, it's not really bad to play. Uh, I have some uh, preemptive barrage not going to be used, but I have the Miraculous Intervention. Uh, I don't know, let's see. Um, my plan is that I'm going to put the Fanatical Sister Repent here, and I'm thinking to put it on plan number two. Plan number two, because that's the red icon I'll be fighting about in the next round, really. Uh, if he's uh, playing a snowball, if he really wants to get those red icons, he will try to, to, to just get it quick. So, Fanatical Sister Repent here on plan number two. Uh, he needs to really go there, uh, and I'm thinking he may to even come with his Warlord to strike for two after dealing one damage from the ability of the one planet, so the ability of the first planet uh, it deals one damage after five units to a target planet, so if I'm gonna put my fanatical sister on plan number two he can trigger the plan number one, deal her the one damage and then try to kill it with the Warlord uh, Dangerous, considering that uh, I do may have two shoulders like this preemptive barrage, but uh, uh, probably wor worth pulling. I don't know. Um, I need some cards, really, uh, but also I need the, the economy. I will, I will spend three, uh, four resources in a second. I have some attachments that I could add. So this Herobeam obviously is the weakest. Uh, Target, I'm thinking what I could add here from that pledge. Sanctified Bolter, definitely not. I don't have e even the units I could pull. Last gun, yeah. But I think the, the most uh, beautiful uh, card that I could really add to uh, this Hero Beam. Let's see, let's put the, the, the Fanatical Sister first. Uh, place her on the board and then think about the attachment. I still only have fun one resource, so I can really uh, make my unit stronger. And Herobim itself, he he will be a great target for the for the Saint Celestine plan number four. It has good effect. Uh, also, uh, two two unit doesn't really oppose any danger. So Sister Repentia goes on planet number two. Uh, my opponent already passed, so it's all down to me to. Um, to really to get um, all down to me to get uh, uh, some deployments here and just resolve the, uh, the command struggle. I think hot shot lap last pistol. That's a good option that I could add to the hammer beam. It's going to make it four attack. Uh, I have two shoulder, so uh, four two. Uh, it could really uh, just survive the blow from. Uh, from the Saint Celestine, and then uh, if the Saint Celestine will be here, we'll try to attack. Uh, that will be shielded uh, with the two Chimera tokens behind. Uh, it could be really uh, just forcing uh, Saint Celestine to, to, to go off the planet, and uh, that could trigger it uh, as well, Iron Forge. So, not a really bad situation. Uh, the only the only uh, thing I can be afraid of is the Saint Celestine going for plan number three, really. Uh, if I can put this uh, last pistol, which I'm about to do, so pay one resource to deploy that from support, and that attachment goes on to Herobim, yeah, Fanatical Sister will be too, too sick. So yeah, plus two, makes it four two, very aggressive unit now. Okay, and he's also a bit mobile, so really I could uh, move him around and use him in the future. So that's, I think, that's it for myself. Uh, I don't have any more action, so we may to think about the commitment. I'm going for plan number three, definitely. Uh, trying to uh, just uh, trying to, 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 to get him there, uh, either on the plan number two or plan number four. If he can go to plan number two, uh, I can actually move the hero beam uh, as the reaction after my order commits onto that. Uh, sister Repentia as well, so I'm gonna have a sister and have a beam uh, oppose the uh, enemy warlord. That's a really good situation. And if the Saint Celestine goes on the beam, I still can make the two Chimera uh, tokens to uh, try to damage him as much as possible. So, yeah, I think this is the way I want to go. Uh, I will gonna get some definitely gonna get some resources to pull the trick. Uh, here, uh, so either a miraculous intervention uh, or preemptive barrage. Really, uh, even 
if the same Celestine is going to go for plan number two and equal my command there, uh, I will still have the one resource from plan number two. So uh, it's not really uh, so bad. However, he's he has initiative. He's going to strike first. If the same Celestines, both of them, they're going to go for plan number three, that's going to be a mortal. Uh, just a really bloody exchange. Now, when he, I'll probably be forced to use that preemptive barrage as a shield. Not a really good option considering the value of the card, but uh, not sure what else I could do. So that's fine. I can put the two fight icons from the support after he's gonna win a battle on plan number one. That's something, but uh, you never know. Uh, let's let's make the commitment. I already made my decision, so we're just waiting for Eric here. Okay, so he makes his choice, and um, we are ready. So I think we can. Well, he didn't indicate that he's ready, but he's chosen ready way to commit. So I'm just waiting for him to indicate. Yeah, he's done. Okay, so we can flip it over. I'm going plan number three, and he goes on plan three as well. So really, best choice for him. Uh, I don't know if he's aware of it, but. Uh, He's getting a one card and one resource. I'm gonna get two cards and one resource. So another copy of Preemptive Barrage and Zealous Cantos. That's a good news. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I need to place one token on Herobeam as per reaction. I can move him around, but I decide to stay with him there. Uh, so anyway, um, Zealous Cantus That will probably allow me to to bring her into play. He knows I received another two cards, so I'm sitting on five cards. I could possibly trigger the the um, trigger the support. That's going to give me two fate icons. So I'll be able to summon uh, something here. However, it, to battle with uh, plan number one, and uh, he's going to get two uh, icons as well from Sacrified Border. So two fade icons added here. I'm thinking, would I be able to do anything uh, to stop this through? I don't think so. I uh, really uh, looking at my cards. I am, I am really grounded to to what I have. Um, so no, uh, absolutely nothing uh, to to get there. So he triggers a plan number one, and that deals one damage to the sister Repentia. I will take that damage. Uh, both Noble Deed and Miracles Intervention are too good to, to discard him simply. Then I can react from my signature support, allows me to search for the six cards whenever my opponent wins the battle. So I will look for search cards for the units. I want some free cost. And yes, I do have three units, well, two units that I can actually use. The first one is the Standard Bearer. Uh, and uh, whenever it enters the play, it read ready a unit on the planet. But second, more importantly, is the unique unit, non-elite unit, Saint Erica, uh, a clear Skarki, and uh, she is actually five five, pretty cool. However, uh, as per ability, you need to control a fate icon to keep her alive. Whenever you don't have any fate icons in play, she goes into discard. So I won't be able to pull her into uh, the game in the first round, but definitely she will be useful on the next one. So I am putting a 5-5 five five unit into my hand. He obviously sees this, so he will know that I will try to pull this, and I'm adding two fate icons to the Sister Repentia, just in case if he will deal a one damage from any ability, uh, then he'll be able to shield and survive. So yeah, uh, Saint Erica in my hand. That gives me a good prospect for the future, uh, but also makes my opponent aware that I will definitely make and pull that move uh, anytime soon. Now I do control free fate icons, so it's not enough for me to to bring it into play. Uh, I may to have any any effects that miraculous intervention. I'm not really sure if the commitments uh, would. Well, I cannot really commit anywhere else now, really, so um, uh, I need to fight here, there is his initiative, so he will definitely strike first, and uh, let's see, he have no actions, I'm just thinking, no, I cannot do anything, so I, I, I pass as well, 
um, is attacked first, and he decides to retreat. So really, he thought about it. Uh, Saint Erica too scary, he says. So probably he forget about the 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 fact that I cannot put in a play uh, without the fate I can into game, and I will spend all three. Uh, that's fine. I gotta pay place two guardsman tokens into planet number one. The guardsman tokens just because of these heavy flame retributor. Uh, he will deal one damage at some point to any or the units in uh, well, the one damage equal to the amount of fate icons on it to target units on that planet. So he could possibly eliminate the chimera tokens too easily. We finished the uh, round number one. We didn't have any action, so it goes down to me. I'm getting a copy of the Imperial Rally Point, which allows me to uh, discount the deployment by one on any green planet. But also I'm getting a copy of the standard bearer again. So there I have some units now I could play or deploy from the world ability. I need to think about generating some fate icons. Obviously the support won't help me here because I need to lose the battle to get two fate icons from the support. So that's not really great. Sanctified Bolter, that's something that I need to play that I need to really put into play immediately and that Sanctified Bolter will definitely trigger that uh, that ability. So what I could do here, really, uh, obviously I don't want to get, give the information away, I have only five resources, I could place the Imperial Rally Point and one of the units. I cannot deploy two units in a, in a play, so Imperial Rally Point and um, Zealous Cantus. I think that's the deployment I can really do uh, into uh, into this round. Imperial Rally Point onto planet number one. Uh, it won't really give me a match. Well, Zealous Cantus will need to go on the planet, but I think I should wait with this deployment first. Uh, my initiative, I have three units on the first planet. I could think about triggering the Miraculous Intervention at some point, or Preemptive Barrage, but uh, to stop my opponent from playing a Snowball, to stop him from getting that quick victory condition, I need to really put something on plan number one to make him rethink uh, his commitment, really. So, Imperial Rally Point on the planet number one, uh, will just indicate that I intend to place another unit here. So yeah, that's kind of going to do. It looks scary now. I, I have some attack value. I have some discounts coming in. So that's a good defense. That's a good blocker. And he will need to definitely think about that. What I will play uh, is my initiative. I will just attack first. So another Sister Repentia here and Preemptive Barrage will be absolutely devastating. Um, is deployment quick uh, tolerant riders on planet number two so he he didn't even thought about plan number one straight away he changed his mind so quick counter deployment for me zealous counters uh, right now uh, a clear scar key units that goes into my discard will give me a fate icon as well so good uh, I, I've been left on one resource so I cannot really deploy much here I cannot really uh, uh, put a lot into play uh, other than the just uh, sanctified bolter really uh, I'll think should I put this sanctified bolter on a fanatical sister or the zealous canters I will think about it uh, once my opponent will deploy his unit he's still left with full resources he's so he could definitely uh, deploy something strong either it's gonna go for planet number one or planet number two uh, he will definitely target you know the red icon I have no doubt about that so there is deployment here and it's actually the heralding Herobim so um, goes more for the command it doesn't give me any information well two resources left uh, it will not be anything great really to, to put into play and to fight so uh, I can be really more easy now about the plan number one uh, it looks like the easier target for him will be plan number two right now, just to go there and get to two resources and then uh, try to, to fight it off. So I'm made to go there with the uh, with my um, warlord after, but I will definitely place the sanctified bolter on Zealous Countess on plan number two. 
just to make it a bit more difficult and uh, in case if the enemy warlord will come here I, I will get those two fight icons uh, for um, for drenched skirmish so 4-4 four, four, Zolus Gantus gains some power and the sacrifice bolter will allow me to get the fate icons so if the enemy warlord will commit here I uh, will be able to probably trigger the miraculous intervention and then try to go over for for the battle with my warlord let's, let's see um, I'm thinking about going for planet number one with my warlord he don't have any more actions I don't have any more actions, I'm just thinking about the commitment right now. Uh, I think the the proper uh, way to do it. The plan of one feels a little bit shy still, despite of having the sister and uh, two guardsmen tokens. It feels shy, really. Uh, I'm made to go there with the warlord just to block. He's a snowball game. Um, he's gonna get two fight icons so that. Heavy Flame and Retributor will definitely survive with the free HP. Uh, it could be a definitely a dangerous to just abandon plan number one. So if I'm going to go for plan number two and he's going to go for plan number two, uh, that's a completely different story. Uh, two Fate Icons there from the Bolter, one Fate Icon from the Hero Beam. I will be able to, to, to summon something, but... I'm not sure if I can have any resources in this realm. This is this is the problem. I may not have enough for the miraculous intervention, really. So uh, if I can go plan number two, he's gonna go plan number two, and he will move the hero beam on planet number one just to block me into the in into the uh, command. Then I'll be without any resources. He has five cards and two resources, so he can pull his uh, effects. Really, I cannot. So I need to go for plan number one to get that resource to be sure that I'll be able to defend myself. So yeah, we made the decisions. Uh, so uh, he's ready. I'm ready. Uh, let's flip the deal. I'm going for plan number one, like I said, and he's going for plan number one as well. So well, okay. So he did. Uh, pushed me around. He did decided to to get the quick. Uh, my reaction from the hero beam. I'm gonna place the fate icon and move him onto the ascent planet to my warlord. He reacts with the hero beam and goes for the same planet. So equals the command. Uh, tricky move. That's denying me two resources. No, he did move it back. So probably he wants to rethink that. Should he get the card and the resource, or should he just? Uh, block the commands on planet number two now yeah that's nice um, I I knew I could do this really but he uh, he he can do the same so he will block my resource income probably he will uh, deny me that two resource that means I'm gonna get only one resource from uh, command on planet number one um, that's not enough to pull the preemptive barrage or noble deed or noble deed and the miraculous intervention that's not enough to do the older tricks so it's still going to be a heavy fight um quite uncomfortable uh, with that sanctified bolter on heavy flamer my sanctified bolter won't trigger won't give me the two fight icons i still be no rent skirmish and no battle on plan number two as so far so uh, uh i'm in a difficult situation so he did move this hero beam on to P2, so uh, I can get only one resource from the first planet, he's not going to get nothing. So slight advantage in the command again for me, but that doesn't give me any favours. He have a one planet in his victory display already, and he may have a chance to get another one here. So yeah, five cards, two resources, definitely have some tricks in his hand. Uh, that will be difficult, uh, that will be difficult. Miraculous intervention, I cannot even pull this right now, because my... Uh, Wardor is already committed to that planet, so I cannot really trigger it, so uh, <sighs> there's no way I could get here the fate icons anyway to, to bring that Saint Erica into play. Bolter is too far away, I have only two tokens and the Repentia, so um, yeah, let's start a battle. React from the uh, Bolter, so he's gonna get two fate icons. Uh, that's great. He already have three. He can summon something very quickly. 
Uh, wonder he has any units in his hand with the five cards I imagine he should so um, not really great for me this game looks more difficult with every second uh, it's not really going well uh, preemptive barrage would give me nothing here really he didn't summon the units so I will strike with everything as well and he decides to pull the our last stand our last stand place one fate icons on each unit you control on the first planet Okay, so he's actually getting another three now. So uh, in total, he have already six fate icons. That's a lot. He could summon something and still be able to defend that retributor, uh, heavy flamer. So whoa, okay, it looks grimmer and grimmer, and uh, I am not sure if I do have a chance to win this game. Really, preemptive barrage won't do much. Uh, well, I could try to blood his warlord. Uh, I, I'm definitely gonna lose the second command. Well, second red icon here. Uh, it's um, it's not really a great it's not really a great situation. I he don't have any action. I don't have any action. He's still thinking. Uh, he might have some tricks. Wow. Okay. Uh, wonder maybe he can summon the unit here and do the preemptive barrage as well. Or well, no, because the he cannot really do the preemptive barrage because he already triggered the sanctified bolter indicating that the range game is started. So, uh, yeah, okay. Suppressive fire. Exhaust the unit you control to exhaust the non warlord unit. And he decided to exhaust his warlord to tap that sister Repentia. I think, first time in my life, I see someone. Uh, using a warlord with the suppressive fire to to tap the enemy units. So whoa, full attack, just uh, neutralized right now. I <laughs> I'm quite uh, impressed. He will definitely survive the first round of everything. There's no way I could bloody the enemy warlord. There's no even way I could kill the heavy flamer. Uh, I don't know what I can do. This is going to be a tough fight. The only way I could think here, the only way I could think that I, I'm, I will be able to uh, do something here is to just strike those three attacks. Uh, okay, he actually pulled the card back, um, asking me that uh, can he get the additional uh, fate icon from the reaction of Zilus Cantus. As the Ecclesiarchy uh, card uh, went into this card, he can trigger the Zillius Cantus. Yeah, I said here, yeah, that's fine, okay. Uh, obviously, uh, we didn't remember about the reaction. As I said, I don't play the Saint Celestine myself uh, before, so I really uh, struggle to remember all of them. Uh, but yeah, okay. He will get the additional fate icon and he added to the Silas Cantus as well. So wow, okay. I'm thinking how to play this. Uh, and the only the only way I could do is to attack with everything. And in the second combat round, I could stay partially while with retreating my warlord. And then only if the warlord is retreated, I could uh, trigger the miraculous intervention to commit him back. To that planet, uh, and then get the two fate icons on it. So that will give me three in total. And as the uh, definitely, if the sister Repentia wouldn't be targeted, I could pull the standard bearer uh, on that planet. Or if the sister Repentia will be destroyed, I can get the additional fate icon, and then I'll be able to play the Saint Erica. So. That battle is not lost yet. I think I do stand some chance here. Uh, I could really play this off. So uh, uh, let's let's go. Uh, let's just start attacking and uh, uh, see how that's going to go. So the first attack, I believe, I should go with the Guardsman token. Uh, just do do not let them die uh, accidentally with something that will come into play. Uh, the deal is. He has three cards left. He may have some units, he may not. Uh, it all depends on him. It doesn't look scary, like with with the amount of the uh, units I have, that he needs to summon something. But, uh, well, it would be definitely a good good move to just to make sure he's going to get that second planet, well, the first planet again. So, uh, 
Yeah, he's he's ready, so I can attack. I think I should be targeting here the Heavy Flamer, uh, just to deal the single damage with the Guardsman tokens. Uh, uh, either he's gonna just use the shield and use four cards, or just add the damage whenever they add the damage. The Heavy Flamer, uh, he have three HP and three Fate Icons, so the three uh, Fate Icons is not enough to stop the Fanatical Sister Repentia in the next round. I really need to deal some damage to that Heavy Flamer to be able to go through with four attacks against three Fate Icons. I need to leave him at least on two damage in this round to uh, just uh, go through the, the Icons uh, of Fate he have. So, Repentia will need to attack, but to make this possible, I need to uh, just cut the way through. So, okay, alright. First attack with the token onto Heavy Flamer. So, uh, that deals one damage. No actions from me, no actions from him, so I can attack again. Uh, so, uh, I will attack this time with my Warlord for two. And he decides to shield it with another copy of the Hourglass Stand. So uh, this means that another Ecclesiarchy uh, card goes into discard, so he will be able to add additional Fate Icon to that discarded shield. So wow, absolutely awesome play, really. Um, and he decided to add that Fate Icon on Zealous Cantus. I think that's a mistake. He should be adding it on the onto uh he should be adding it onto heavy flamer to prevent that sister repentia from killing the units now i attack with the guardsman token adding additional damage that's already one hp left and i have no actions that's a mistake i believe that's going to give me a chance here so the the fate icons from the discarded shield it goes on the zealous cantus so i do stay partially with retreating my warlord as i said uh that goes back in in the hq you know, I stay with everything else. My opponent obviously will stay here. Uh, it's not scared of uh, what I could do. And now I'm going to pull the Miraculous Intervention. Uh, that means whenever the battle round starts, I can uh, commit my Warlord to that planet and add two Fate Icons to it. So I am getting two Fate Icons to my tapped Warlord. Uh, that's really cool. I have three in total. I am able to uh, summon a unit uh, from my hand uh, so that was that was good that was enough for me to pull the, the trigger right now sister repentia will be attacking and with the full attack will be able to kill the heavy flamer so unless he have some more tricks in his hand unless he's gonna kill or tap the sister repentia this battle suddenly looks a bit more brighter a bit more uh, bit more equal actually so uh, with the Saint Erica or standard bearer in hand really uh, depends on what he's gonna play uh, I can still uh, defend myself here so he's thinking obviously surprised by the way I played the miraculous intervention uh, definitely uh, something that he didn't thought about uh, so mm, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's a game changer, I think, in, in that battle right now. He's ready, so I can attack here. Um, let's uh, do not wait and risk. I'll attack for four with the Sister Repentia, uh, dealing four damage on the Retributor. He's adding one damage and removing the Fate Icons. Uh, he probably forgot that the. Uh, total of the HP on the Heavy Flamer is 3, not 4, so I'm just saying he's dead, and now he probably realized that he made a mistake, so yeah, that unit goes uh, into discard, he died, uh, that's a really good good outcome from that attack, so uh, yeah, I will be, uh, he's pulling the cards back again, uh, indicating that this is another Ecclesiastes Harky unit that goes into discount, trying to add a Fate Icon, but I am just quickly saying in like, uh, chat that he's unable to do so as the Zealous Cantus uh, ability is limited by twice per phase and he already used it twice so yeah uh, that's impossible okay so um, I removed the most dangerous unit from the planet uh, he only been left on the two cards so he's getting a little bit dry here 
uh, obviously you have a lot of uh, fate icons still, you could summon something, but as he didn't do it in the first round, I made to think he's, he don't have any really great units to, to bring in a battle, so uh, it looks okay for me. Now, if he decides to, to attack anything else, or he decides to attack the fanatical sister Repentia, that will give me additional fate icon, and that will, yes, there's a attack from the warlord for two, and this... I could shield with the preemptive barrage. Let me just think about it. Preemptive barrage, obviously a very useful card, but if he attack with the warlord and uh, the sister is gonna stay alive, I could really think here. I will, but he's moving back. Ah, sorry, you should be passing first. Okay, so I pass down the attacks again with the warlord. Uh, okay, so. I think I have two copies of the Primitive Barrage. I could really use one here uh, to keep this sister Repentia alive and just annoy him and then start attacking with the Guardsman tokens onto Zillus Canters to deal the single damage as much as possible. So, um, hmm. I think the shield needs to be used here. I think the, the battle. Uh, I couldn't really uh, sacrifice the Repentia, bring the Saint Erica into play and let him to attack with the Zealous Canters. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I think I need to use that shield. Uh, let the Repentia to survive and then force him to use the Zealous Canters to kill it again with another strike on the Fanatical Sister. So yeah, that's the way I did it. I, I showed that attack and uh, either it, well, it's gonna attack the warlord or the token. I'll play the standard bearer and then attack with the Repentia and the standard bearer. Or if he's gonna kill fanatical sister, I'm gonna bring the Saint Erica. So either way, it's f six or five damage dealt. Uh, additionally, so yeah, okay. He have no actions. Uh, it's my attack, I believe. Uh, the tokens uh, should be striking into Zealous Cantus. So the first attack from the token, uh, let's see, mm, do you have any shields? Two cards left, mm. I don't think so. Attack for one, I don't think he's gonna use the shields even if you have any, uh, it's just what, one damage goes through. Uh, it's just a way that he, he's gonna leave himself very dry and Saint Celestine need a card. Yeah, there's a counter attack and he does attack for the zealous, uh, for the fanatical uh, Repentia with the Zillius Cantus. That gives me additional uh, fate icon from the Zillius Cantus itself as the reaction. And now I can, uh, well, I just add it to my Warlord really, um, just to keep him with the that additional fate icon. So yes, um, added to my Warlord, I have four in total. I could really use the ability. I have no actions uh, waiting for him to, to, to try to do something. No, he don't. So I can attack with the another Guardsman token, and I think that's going to be additional damage to the Zealous Cantus uh, to make him to leave him on a one HP. Uh, and I'm doing this because this is my initiative, so I'll definitely be able to strike uh, again in the next combat round. So I can bring this Saint Erica here uh, into battle and uh, actually attack the Warlord, not the Zealous Cantus, to deal four damage to the Warlord if he's going to use the Fate Icon. Yes, so I'm spending three of my Fate Icons to bring the three cost unit into play. Non elite, that's Saint Erica 5 5. He have no actions and attacking Warlord. It looks like it's a better decision for me. I, I will leave the Zealous Counters 1 HP and I will actually deal full damage considering the one Fate Shield uh, onto Warlord. So it looks suddenly that I actually smashed him really hard. That's cool. And he decides to retreat immediately, uh, which is really good. Uh, that's what I wanted. So I, I've managed to take this back, pull this around. And he goes back, he just uh, forgot that this is my decision first. Obviously I stay, uh, I wouldn't do anything else than just staying here, so retreating would be mad. So yeah, I stay. He goes back, obviously, yeah. Um, I cannot really trigger the plan ability, because I have a lot more cards than uh, he does, so uh, if I'll have less cards I'll be able to draw three, but no. But at least I secured the nearest victory condition, the red icon, and I actually had the one icon from each color myself. 
So that's really cool. Um, yeah, the Eve Perry Rari point, uh, I didn't really use it, but it was really to, to just carry him off. Uh, it didn't quite work, uh, but it's, it did the job, really. Um, yeah, so that was close, I was in trouble, uh, but I've managed to, to pull this off. So uh, really uh, just uh, made that game more even. And suddenly it looks uh, quite good for me because on the next planet I have those two strong units, Hero Beam with four attack, Zealous Cancers with four attack, and the Sanctified Bolter. That will give me insta to fight icons anyway. So yeah, we're finishing the round. So I just check in here if the anything everything is recording properly. Yes, it does. So we can go back in the game. Okay. Now, um, reaction from the Warlord uh, that Saint Erica goes into this card uh, after the uh, phase ends, and I'm pulling here the copy of the Eldritch Council. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, we can end the turn. So uh, turn number three. Uh, initiative goes back to Eric. Uh, I'm getting a copy of promotion and a copy of the banner of the Sacred Rose. So some, some sort of the economy booster and the command. Uh, nothing really with the units. That's not a good news. Uh, I have only one unit standard bearer. And that's it. So um, I'm guessing this is not... Not really good. So uh, he's playing the novice squad. Um, one cost or one one unit, uh, but with the reaction that allows him to receive the fate icon whenever the warlord commits to that planet. So then it makes him two two. Uh, okay, so he actually goes on planet number three. That's another red icon. So he's consistent here uh, to really gain. Um, to really gain as much as possible uh, and just keep pushing the uh, victory condition. So my first deployment here is going to be the Elders Council. I, whenever I deploy the non-elite unit, I can look on the top uh, amount of cards equal the cost of the unit I deployed. And then if I have less cards, I can uh, draw one or and put one on the bottom of my deck. So really selecting. Uh, here he passed. Wow, so I can deploy another card. Uh, I'm putting a copy of promotion on my hero beam now. Hero beam will be uh, moving around. So if I could go plan number two, hero beam could jump back on plan number three to gain the uh, command there. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities here. So hero beam suddenly you have more attack, more command uh, to keep him flexible uh, with those abilities. I think it works very well. Uh, I still have four resources, so definitely standard bearer should go into play uh, normally I could also put a copy of the bodyguard uh, bodyguard it moves moving the damage around onto that unit whenever any other unit on the planet is damaged so I could try to place this bodyguard onto the zealous cantus uh, just to let this harrow beam stay alive for any other units that it is there uh, to, to stay alive with the 4 HP I could really think of uh, protecting the weaker units really so yeah mm, reassign the damage uh, it doesn't cost me anything it doesn't really do much uh, it's actually if you think about it, it's pretty useless because I have this uh, hot last gun pistol on the hero beam which mm, says that we are unable to remove the damage from the units so <laughs> that bodyguard is more a scaring card now than anything else is useless but i don't need to tell that to my opponent uh, and this was for zero cost so i still have four that i could really deploy here and so should i deploy the uh standard bearer really i am not really sure uh, I don't. I passed and I'm just going to commit to plan number three. And he quickly makes this decision about the commitment as well. And he goes for plan number three as well. So that's not the good news. I messed up with my commitment a little bit. I should go just for plan number two. Um, he did go for plan number three, obviously, to heal his warlord as per reaction. I'm getting one third icon from the hero beam. He's getting one icon from the hero beam. Uh, is his reaction first so I will wait for his hero beam to move or not if he's gonna decide to move on plan number two or four 
I can go with my hero beam uh, over there as well and just try to get. I wish to go for plan number two with my hero beam, but he decides to stay. Uh, that's suspicious. Uh, considering that he, I have two strong units, I would decide to stay as well. I don't like that move. I thought that he's going to go away, but not. Uh, he may to try to pull something. Uh, he may to try to fight me off here. Uh, so no, 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 no. I don't like the fact that he stayed. I'm gonna stay as well. Uh, this is giving me uh, nothing, and he's gonna get uh, one card and one resource for plan number three. S no, actually, I am getting two resources from plan number one as I have a copy of promotion. So I have uh, a lot of cash uh, for all my effects, but I don't have any units. I don't have any cards in play. Uh, so that's pretty thin. Uh, suddenly I'm not so sure plan number one looks safe I think it was a good decision to, to leave the arrow beam there considering that he already has to press a fire he may have more tricks in his hands I do not trust him at all uh, with the one unit on the planet it could be really dangerous so no uh, yeah he obviously reacted with uh, novice squad uh, he added the fate icon uh, on his unit um, so that make gives him two fate icons in total I still have only one but I can get two from the boulder in a second so I could bring the standard bearer into play with my warlord I cannot do it on a plan number one so uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, I need to consider uh, really uh, obviously Obviously, I uh, will need to think about any nasty effects. The, this, um, the two strong units on the plan number one, it looks like he's unable to do anything, uh, but I may not be sure. Uh, he's thinking about the actions. He's really thinking about something. Uh, no, he has no command. So let's just start the... Uh, the Battle plan number one, any pre combat actions? I'm just asking before I'm gonna trigger my uh, Sanctify Bolter. He no, so I'm gonna add two fate icons here uh, to my Zealous Cantus. And now, uh, thing no, there it is, there's an action Miraculous Intervention. So he did pull the same trick like I do. Uh, he moved his warlord, committed to the first plan whenever combat round starts, add the two fate icons to his warlord make a total four and suddenly he have his uh, ah okay so as the miraculous intervention was an uh, uh, Gilsarki card he's gonna add additional fate icons for the zealous canters wow so uh, suddenly he, he had an additional three fate icons uh, here so okay I guess He's thinking where to add this fate icon to which units. Um, yeah. Mm. And he decides to put it on the uh, heralding uh, Herobim, so uh, recognized that I could kill the unit. He just added uh, two uh, fate icons there. Okay. Um, thinking about the preemptive barrage. Should I play it here? Uh, should I not? Really? I'm not sure. I could try to bloody his warlord. I could try to attack for four and four. And well, the standard bearer cannot into come into play. And now he decides to play the copy of the uh, Emperor's Warrant. So command action, well, combat action. Exhaust the target enemy unit of the planet without enemy warlord. Then deal damage equal to that unit's attack value to another target unit of the planet. So what he does, he's actually uh, tapping the Zealous Cantus. And using the Zulu Scantus attack value to kill the Herolding Herobeam. So absolutely awesome play. Uh, not only he broke uh, all my plans for the preemptive barrage, but also he killed automatically the Herobeam and he tapped the Zulu Scantus. Suddenly it looks like the battle is going to be lost in a seconds. Wow, really cool play. Um, well, <laughs> I don't even have a response that I can really do. Uh, all my units are tapped. He's have an absolutely a uh, advantage. Uh, suddenly, the Talon Riders they gonna get plus two attack because the Warlord is present. There is a Hero Beam who get an attack for two and the Warlord for two. So six attacks will finish off the Zulus Cantus. Uh, 
I can't even use the shield because this, uh, the Zealous Cantus attack value is 4 with that Sanctified Bolter. It's not free, so I cannot really defend it here. Uh, it's dead. The Herald, Herald, Herald Beam is dead, and there's nothing that I could stop him from doing that trick. Absolutely uh, disgusting. Uh, I need to put it in a discard. Uh, promotion, uh, last pistol, or oh, just lost. Uh, really, really bad. So I have no actions, he don't have any actions, so we can uh, start a battle. It looks really bad. Uh, I have some shields that I could use to survive. And the first attack for two, I will shield with that banner. Uh, I don't want to have more economy, I have already six resources, so I don't need to discount myself uh, in the future. That's fine, that shield didn't cost me anything. It's still two attack from the Hellbeam. Beam. Uh, should I use the preemptive barrage? I don't know, I have the eye icons here. Uh, that I cannot really use. Um, I have the. Uh, <laughs> I need to survive. I need to survive the attacks. I have 4 HP. Um, but something needs to be used as a shield. Either the preemptive barrage or even the fade icons. Preemptive barrage could be really useful in the future as well. Though he's going to get this icon. I'm not going to stop him from getting the planet. So this preemptive barrage could really save me in the future. Or if he's going to trigger the plan ability and bring the two Chimera tokens, those shields, they're going to be useful for my Warlord or for the uh, Guardsman token. So no, I'm going to use the Fate Icons on the Zillus Cantos to let, just let it go away. Uh, and now I am indicating that the banner as well, it was the Achilles Archie card as well. So I'm going to get the Fate Icon uh, for that as well. I know it's a bit too late, but I allowed my opponent to do it twice already, so uh, yeah, I don't think he have anything against it, no. So I actually had a free fade icons, now I need to think about either I would like to sacrifice them, or just just go with the damage through. So let's go back into attack for the Herobrim, uh, he can attack again. Uh, not really great, not really great. Uh, well, I could use those fate icons to bring the standard bearer into play on planet number three, but let's wait with it. Uh, he attacks for two. Um, the preemptive barrage I will use here. Uh, just gonna stay with it. Uh, trying to survive. He's still gonna be able to summon the unit. He will try to kill me off. So I'm thinking here. Uh, there's a something strong coming over. I would like to leave this free uh, fate icons and secure myself. In case of any Zealous Cantus or any free attack unit will come into play. Another attack for two. Now I think there's a time to uh, either use the fate or just pull that. I'll use the fate. I know it doesn't make sense, but uh, maybe I'm being too secured. Uh, maybe I'm being too uh, defensive here. Uh, he has two cards left, so he may not have any additional units to summon it on the first planet. So I decided to risk and I ditched a copy of the Primitive Barrage and I thrown away all those uh, fade icons. So yeah, and he's thinking, okay. And he do select his warlords, so that means he will summon the unit from his hand, paying the fate, fate icons. One, two, one, two, three. So, Sister Repentia with four attacks. Wow, it's gonna kill me. It's just. <laughs> wow, okay. Mm. I will need to use the copy of Novel Deed to show myself to survive this attack. This is not good. He just go all in to get that red icon. He just go all in to kill the Zealous Cantus. And uh, as much as it seems to be the very expensive play, it makes a lot of sense uh, to just get rid of that card. And uh, also to get rid of my uh, Sanctified Bolter. Four attacks, uh, four HP. I need to use my shield. So, hmm. Okay, I guess uh, there's nothing else we can do here. So, uh, let him attack. I don't have any actions. Uh, so, yeah, attack for four from Repentia on my Zillus Cantus. And the shields needs to be used. Uh, the Sanctified Bolter. 
and the fact that Zealous Countess will survive and the Sanctified Bolter will be brought into play on the next battle, it could be absolutely important for me to be able to survive to pull the unit into play. So Noble Deed, as much as I love the idea of using this card, needs to be discarded. So three damage goes through, one shielded. That means the Zealous Countess will survive. So all that all the attacks, all the effort he did, and he was really hoping to kill, and that I do not have shield, but I have. So we both ready. Uh, obviously, he retreated to the warlord? No, he don't. Okay, so he stay. I am definitely not staying here, so yeah. I will need to retreat, and then he triggers the plan number one, the ability, and that's gonna allow him to add the two chimera or guardsman tokens to that battle on planet number three suddenly the planet number three doesn't look good as well he don't have any cards on his hand so probably not many shields but i don't have any attacks that i could really kill uh, he's gonna have a chimera tokens he's gonna have uh, zealous counters maybe he's not gonna survive but uh, novice squads attacks for two i don't know really he gets another red icon that will allow me to trigger my signature support as he won the battle so that's my only chance now here to try to pull that signature support uh, to look for the six cards for the unit and then get two fate icons and I'm getting a uh, copies of the heralding uh, herobim so two cards with two uh, fate icons are gonna add now that will allow me to pull over the trick from my warlord and still bring them in onto into that battle right now so lucky draw really uh, I'm getting a card and I'm putting in two uh, fate icons on the remaining army units so God bless that Zealous Cantus that survived really because otherwise I wouldn't be able to put them in play so I have two fate icons the battle starts here and I think I will wait with the Herodin Herobeam for that novice squad to attack first and then only after I will bring him into the play so i have no actions just waiting for your response if he have any actions uh, then i will uh no no actions here so i will obviously try to kill the strongest unit which is the zealous cancer itself um let's see if you have any fields two shield that i can really because the one will not want to do the work so hopefully not no it's not so he, he dies uh that's okay that's cool. Uh, I have no action, so it's going to be his attack. He's going to attack for two with the novice squad, and he's going to kill my guardsman token. That's fine. And now, in this situation, uh, I'm going to have the action from my warlord, and I will pay two fate icons from the zealous counters in my HQ to uh, summon the heralding herobim uh, into that battle and attack for two uh, either for the novice squad or for the chimera token and i think i will attack the novice squad uh, as it's just going to generate the more fate icons in the future so yeah attack for two or chimera token no novice squad let's do it oh, let's attack for two oh. any shield well if he's gonna use the shield then uh, probably will survive no no shields so that's fine he's dead uh, my plan worked really well so uh, we go in the next combat round I am ready and I definitely stay well I need to pull the herobin back I think just to let him to die itself uh, let him to stay in the game and then I can pull another card so yeah I will move the herobin back just to allow to use the ability of the support in in, in full but uh, he may to decide to stay but that will be a suicide really uh, those kind mirror tokens they would be useful in the next battle he will be coming back here yes he did retreat so he go back in his queue and now I can heal up to full damage from my units so that zealous counters will kill itself to zero uh, damage and uh, my wall is going to go back in HQ and now I can uh, trigger the ability into the end so the hero beam is going to go back in the discard and I can pull a card and this is actually sacred rose emulator very important row uh, we're going to end up with the uh, turn and we're going to go back to turn number four uh, so uh, okay really good 
uh, I'm getting another uh, copy of the Sacred Drug Simulator and a Void Pirate. So I have units all over. 10 resources, that's absolutely okay. First deployment, quick uh, Sacred Drug Simulator onto planet number 2. And I'm gonna finally trigger the Eldrith Cancel that allows me to look on the top of the 3 cards. And get uh, one card into my hand, as I have less cards than my opponent. That's going to be the Heavy Flamer. And one card I can move back uh, on the bottom of the uh, deck, and that's going to be the Mount Novice Squad. I feel like don't need more units, but that Miraculous Intervention left on top uh, will be important to keep it in play. So the Sacred Rose Emulators. Now with those uh, Chimera Tokens, uh, Herobeams, the uh, Talon Riders, those Emulators, they will be devastating, they will be really important and will give me some attacks. Uh, Herobeam uh, deployed on plan number one. Uh, I could really counter it with the Heavy Flamer. So I still have seven resources, that means the Sacred Rose Emulator, Heavy Flamer and the Void Pirate, I could deploy all of them. So uh, that gives me a some possibility, but I will place the Heavy Flamer on plan number one. Plan number one is not so important, but it gives me just more command here. So I am getting the advantage here. I am, uh, I am just, uh, do not let him to get anything. And now he decides to put the copy of Devoted Hospitaller. So whenever that unit enters play, place two Fate icons and Monk Army Energy Control, and then you may exhaust an enemy army unit at this planet uh, to add the attack uh, value uh, to this unit to, to deal, deal damage to, equal to the attack value. So first of all he's gonna place two fate icons. Uh, he'll think about it. He might have play, place two fate icons on the hospitaler itself just to do prevent him from dying from that uh, heavy flame re uh, reactor to, uh, damage. But also he just can place them anywhere else. And he put them on a heralding herobim. So um, He's more concerned about the Herobeam staying alive than the and really anything else. Uh, as he's gonna exhaust my units, uh, deal damage to the <coughs> Hospitaller, uh, Hospitaller is gonna die, but then uh, my uh, Heavy Flamer is gonna be tapped, so he uh, regains the command uh, advantage on the plan number one. That's cool. I'm gonna deploy a uh, Void Pirate, a uh, Void Pirate goes on plan number five. Just purely for the uh, economy, really now, two resources, one card from that planet. It's a plan last planet, so enemy warlord wouldn't go there. Uh, that's going to be a complete suicide for the next few planets. And also to just uh, really see what he has, only two cards left. So one deployment, uh, if you were forced to deploy it there, it's absolutely uh, everything that he will be able to do. So it's still good for me. Uh, so let's see is his deployment move, uh, really. I'm uh, not sure what he could do here. I uh, was thinking about it. So, um, yeah. Devoted Hospitaller again, the second copy placed on planet number two. So he deal, he pulls the same trick again, really. So he's uh, adding two fade icons between the units. So, uh, and uh, he's gonna exhaust my Sacred Rose emulator. So, uh, that move, I believe, is just to allow him to uh, allow his Chimera tokens to land here and that uh, Sacred Rose Emulator to do not attack and do not add the one damage to do to Chimeras, I believe. So that's the exhausting attack it, it is for, really. So he adds a uh, one fate icon between the uh, Herobeams. Uh, and then decides to exhaust the emulator that will deal one attack back to the hospitaler but he will stay alive so again uh, the command advantage regained on plan number two as well uh, that's changing quite a lot I think uh, that's uh, that's crossing my plans so I made to rethink uh, my strategy again so uh, in this situation really what I could do only is to think uh, to deploy the standard bearer in a normal deployment uh, uh, and just make that sacred rose emulator ready I think uh, this is the only thing I could do the sacred rose emulator attack will be absolutely important those chimera tokens they cannot stay alive they cannot really survive the landing he did he do go for plan number two Every, all the signs on heaven tells me that he's gonna try to 
uh, go for the third red planet. It makes total sense, obviously, uh, as well, the reaction of the planet, the healing four damage from his warlord, absolutely important for him to get that. So I think the standard bearer and uh, to make him ready, the Sacred Rose Immolator, uh, that's, uh, well, I could place there the second Sacred Rose Immolator and then just uh, really uh, just uh, just have them both on the planet but as I'm gonna put the standard bearer I will actually have uh, both uh, well one icon from the bearer itself and one icon back from the ready emulator I will have back the advantage and the command on that planet so uh, uh, thing that's the way I should go really um, nothing else I should be doing than this. Uh, so uh, I'm just thinking uh, what I should commit. Uh, if, it, if I can commit on planet number two, uh, it's dangerous because he still can get the advantage on planet number one. And then uh, it could go all the way down to the last planet, really. I don't know. Uh, what's the best choice to hear to make but I think standard bearer uh, is my first plan I could make the standard bearer uh, ready with the heavy uh, retributor and then go with my warlord on planet number two um, but I know I'm gonna pull this, this the first uh, first thing that I was thinking about so uh, standard bearer and make the emulator ready so uh, it's completely uh, reverting back history that he pulled uh, with the hospitaler so uh, we ready uh, both of us we don't have any more deployment actions so it was gonna be on down to commitment I'm gonna go for planet number one anyway sacred low simulator is ready so at least I'm gonna be able to kill the uh, chimera token so that's fine but I want to uh, just push for the second green uh, second green uh, icon right now I just want to uh, get two additional cards as well uh, to be able to just gain anything really the cards are very important he also have one resource one card so uh, those cards are essential uh, really to get uh, for the warlord ability uh, as we drained so low and he goes for plan number three that's very surprising so he probably thought I am going for plan number two as well and he just abandoned the idea of taking it over and he decided to go for the next easiest target which is the plan number three I do understand uh, where that moves coming from really as uh, it looks like totally I'm coming for plan number two and now uh, he he actually put himself in a very difficult spot not only I have the advantage on plan number two uh, he's gonna move this herobim somewhere he, he's adding uh, one I can put each Herobim here, so he's trying to move them around. Um, let's see where how they're gonna react. So the ready one's gonna go on planet number two to negate my no, he's gonna go on planet number four, that makes more sense. So it's gonna prevent me from getting that two resources in the one card. And the second one may move around as well. And the second one, uh, let's see uh, where he's gonna go really is thinking about uh, does it gonna move or it stay I think you should stay really where it is right now but uh, it's totally down to my opponent to make that decision I'm not really sure uh, what is he planning to do so let's just wait for his reaction so he did move to planet number two I'm not sure why this move has been done that way, but that's fine. So he equaled the uh, command on planet number four, but I am getting the uh, command on planet number one and planet number two. So it's going to be one card for my opponent and three cards and one resources for myself. That's absolutely important. Those cards, they will be absolutely essential to really to start getting a final wedge uh, for the end of the game so uh, he's just asking uh, we doing the commands um, uh, I'm having some difficulties here I think I had a phone call here so just one second okay we back after short break I'm gonna claim the planet so I'm gonna get three cards one of them is a miraculous intervention holy chopper finally I'm getting my support and avoid pirate as well so uh, 
not not too many cards that I will be useful. Uh, definitely Holy Chapel and Miraculous Intervention. That's a fate generating uh, token. Uh, the Sacred Rose Demon later will come into play. You have new actions. I have new actions to command. So it's going to be Battle and Plan number one. I'm going to get fate, uh, two fate icons from the Sanctified Bolter again. So that's going to load my Zealous Cantus. Um, just asking for actions from my opponent. Does he have any? I'm ready. He's ready. So I made to move something into HQ uh, to get the uh, to get plus two HP plus two attack onto my unit. And I'm thinking about heavy flamer. Really, he's three two. I'm gonna make him five four. Uh, that unit uh, it will be very useful for the Chimera tokens uh, for the next battle in the future to boost it up uh, up to five four absolutely essential so yeah that's what i'm going to do uh, iron forge is going to trigger and just add that attack value and hp value to that planet second uh, green eye can secure in my victory display so i have actually two greens you have two reds still uh, we need to resolve this somewhere further along so he's ready i think do i have any actions here that i could pull off not really i uh, well i could Use the miraculous intervention uh, again uh, to bring my warlord over there, and then try to try to uh, summon the sacred rose immolator to kill the uh, chimera tokens, to kill the uh, talon riders, just to really, uh, just to really to to to, to just overwhelm them. So he's setting himself comfortably onto that planet. But I'm thinking Sacred Rose Immolator is such a cool unit. It uh, actually deals one damage to up to two units whenever it moves to the planet. So it could be more useful to just deploy him on planet number one and then in the future to bring him back along into next battle. That miraculous intervention deployed here, it's not really as important. He still has six fate icons, that's what's worrying me. He still would be able to pull a strong unit into the battle. So the question is, do I want him to prevent from triggering the battle ability and getting a free support or not? Uh, does it make any difference? Does it really worth me risking all of uh, all of my uh, well, the, my strongest event and uh, sacrificing the sacred rose emulator just from him preventing uh, and also i'm spending one resource heavy thinking here but i'm thinking maybe not maybe i'm just gonna let him to have it and let him to trigger the plan ability here uh, i don't know what kind of supports he can have in his hand maybe catachan outpost maybe a holy chapel as well i don't know but uh I think the six fate icons he do have already, they'll be absolutely wasted uh, if I'm not going to come there. And if I will come there and he will use them, he could possibly bring uh, another Zealous Cantus or something in the plate. So uh, I'm taking a bit long time to thinking about this, but I want to be sure that I make an absolute correct decision because that's... Uh, uh, we are getting to the late stage of the game where every mistake now will just basically decide about the end result of the game. So uh, that's why I'm kind of spending more time than I should. So I decide to pass, uh, allow him to search top gate cards for the support of the attachment here. Um, I played safe and he found a card and this is going to be a holy trouble. Okay, so support. Uh, I can allow, allow him to add, add, add four. Uh, fate icons in the future. Now, as he won the battle, I can trigger my support. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to look on the top six cards to look for the unit, and then, uh, wow, okay, I have a third copy of the Sacred Rose Emulator, and I think I can go in the full mode with the emulators all over the place mm -hmm. right now. The Zealous Cantus uh, could be useful, but I think with all those small units that he has, uh, the really the attack spread here. It's more important, so I'm going to get a third copy of the emulator. That's going to be a killer in a second. Uh, I think it's it's better choice than the Zillis Cantus now. So yeah, uh, he's ready. Uh, I am ready as well. I'm just going to add the two fight icons here. 
it thought about it for the second if it works to bring that anything into play or not but no we passed so let's finish the turn and go into turn number five Wow, okay, I'm getting a copy of Standard Bearer and Our Last Stand. Our Last Stand is very important in the uh, final phase of the game uh, because not only he adds one fate icon to all the units, uh, but also uh, it actually uh, adds additional uh, reaction interrupt to my warlord. Uh, if I have, if that planet on the battle it shares. Uh, the uh, victory display icon with two uh, icons in the enemy victory display which is the red in the case of the first battle then uh, I actually uh, reduce uh, one damage on my warlord so it's really cool that I have it now it's also also two shielder uh, I have some options here uh, deployment from the uh, Eric is the Celestine Amelia so Celestine Amelia is a martyr uh, after an enemy unit is declared as an attacker at this planet, while that unit is attacking, reduce all damage taken by other uh, units you control to one. So it really forced you to, to, to target the Cilician Amelia first, really. You need to really uh, get rid of her, otherwise she will just uh, prevent the attack. So it's, it's actually a perfect play to, pr to, to protect those uh, small units here. Uh, well, it's actually other other Astra Militarium units, so she's not going to be able to protect the uh, uh, Chimeras. Uh, it will be only the uh, Talon Riders, so not actually as good as it should be, really. Uh, I think he just didn't have any other uh, options here with that deployment. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, I have five resources. I will last stand. This is going to be something useful. Uh, it costs zero, zero, so it's actually very difficult. Um, miraculous intervention still in my play. I'm gonna get put in Holy Chapel first. I still have four resources, so uh, Holy Chapel here support. Uh, that's uh, something that I will may need to, to bring the standard bearer or the second sacred in later. So my opponent is done. He have no more deployments here. Uh, left with two resources and a free cost, so it's all down to me. I'm thinking. Uh, Probably I should deploy another sacred in later on plan number one just to move them into the battle on the next round uh, just to f kind of pierce through those, those chimera tokens by just committing that in the next combat uh, in the next turn so yes this is absolutely essential deployment and as I have one resources left uh, I think the the best deployment for myself here at this uh, at this position should be the Void Pirate on planet number 3 uh, just to regain the economy cap there so yes the Void Pirate goes where it should be and uh, I've been left with the zero resources so that's all my deployments now and uh, I, I have the uh, advantage on the planet number 1 uh, with the uh, command hammers I'm gonna go for plan number well one or two, I should be going on plan number one, just to, just to tr now to try to play the snowball. I don't want him to pull any tricks to risk too much on the planet number one. Uh, this is obviously a red icon, so it could be very dangerous to just leave it unguarded. Uh, I'm just gonna commit over there, I think, on planet number one and do what it's supposed to be done, uh, win that planet and allow my sacred emulators to move uh, move back in HQ and then bring them forward onto the next planet and I think this is the best decision I could make. So planet number one indeed uh, the best option here uh, yeah so uh, let's leave it like that he already made his decision so he made to go for plan number three yes he does so he did go uh, there first of all to uh, go with the, with the Herobrim uh, both of the Herobims on the plan number two, so he prepares himself first of all for the next battle, but also he kind of left Saint Celestine uh, against those two uh, two defenseless Void Pirates. So a uh, really really good move from from Eric uh, in terms of the commands. Uh, he just left the lone Hospitaller, uh, so he's gonna get one card and two resources. Mm. That's what he needs really for the next battle. 
I should be playing our last stand, but not right now. Uh, that's gonna be safe for the next battle. So I have no actions. The miraculous intervention I will need to play uh, here definitely. But let's add the two fate icons from the sanctified portal first. Uh, so uh, yeah, two fate icons uh, on the Zulus counters from the bolter. And then so I will probably attack from the Sacred Rose emulator. So attack for uh, not the warlord, the emulator for one. Uh, adds one fate icon on the emulator itself, so that makes it three for myself. The uh, hospitaler dies. I can trigger the plan ability, but uh, I don't need to. Uh, so uh, it goes into my victory display. I have now two red icons as well, and I need to play the miraculous intervention. And I just realized that I didn't pull uh, the resource income uh, for my uh, command, so I actually didn't claim the one resource, one card. So I'm kind of writing it that down that I forgot about my income. I think he did. I didn't. I, uh, yeah, I didn't definitely. He did. Okay, so I'll, I'll take that resource and the card now. Um, yeah, it says go ahead. So cool. Uh, so uh, one card. Fanatic also to repent. Yeah, that's really cool. And the resource. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm sure I missed something. Yeah. So my plan was to use the uh, miraculous intervention to have that resource, but then in the end, I just forgot to take that resource. It's really bad. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, the battle on plan number three uh, leaves me with the two Void Pirates against the Saint Celestine, and now the plan needs to be executed. So, Miraculous Intervention used here uh, will allow me to commit the Warlords. Uh, the Warlords can come over uh, onto planet number three. I'm gonna add two Fate Icons to that Warlord uh, to um, just load him and. Uh, is his initiative so he's gonna have a first action he can attack or he can retreat now uh, suddenly it doesn't look so good now suddenly he do have only two fate icons he could really use the holy chapel to try to bring something over and try to fight off my saint celestine but he's fully aware that i do have a fate icons uh, five of them already and i have holy chapel as well so i could really uh, fight him off here so yeah so he's thinking uh, about his course of action uh, what to do stand the bearer uh, it could be useful uh, but no okay so Saint Celestine is going back in HQ so he decides to retreat and I'm gonna trigger the plan ability that allows me to exhaust the unit for the next round he's gonna stay exhausted so uh, I'm targeting the uh, Celestine Amelia so my uh, my you my warlord's gonna go back into HQ. Uh, that's cool. He def I'm just waiting for his action, so he don't have any actions now. I can go back. Okay. So let's end the turn. Turn number f six. It's gonna be. Yeah, I'm getting a copy of the heavy flamer retributor and the armor of the Saint Catherine free shoulder card. Uh, this is really cool. I'm happy about that. I just, let's just go back because uh, I wrote it the video back. So, uh, yeah, the uh, I'm just reminding my opponent that the uh, Amelia stays exhausted as per plan ability, and uh, it's my initiative. So I'm gonna have my deployment first. So let's think uh, what I should really do here. Uh, Heavy flame and retributor. Uh, that's the unit I'm thinking about. Really, he has six cards. So f after my deployment, I'll be able to trigger the. Uh, Eldrift cancel support again. So heavy flamer goes on plan number one uh, again. Another uh, damage spread. So uh, I'm gonna use the uh, Eldrift cancel to look on for top of the three cards. He kind of already deployed, so I kind of go a little bit too fast. I still have the reaction, so I'm gonna go with it, and I can really pull. A I can pull a copy of the card here and draw it still. So I'm gonna dis I'm gonna I decided to go with the promotion. I'll try to get. He have only four uh, command hammers. Uh, if I'm gonna put that promotion on the heavy flamer, that's already equaled his uh, his uh, command here. So, so I decided to move the uh, fanatical sister 
on the bottom of my deck as it's not going to be useful anymore I have one copy already uh, he did deploy quickly so I just mentioned kindly that he kind of speed himself a little bit uh, too quick with his Akilam Shrine card deployment I had the reaction so he was five cards against six so I had the real uh, reason to pull that card now uh, he did deploy already so it's again my deployment uh, so I put the uh, Rose Emulator, he had four, four hammers uh, with the promotion, I have four hammers as well, so I made it equal. Uh, I don't think he's going to be deploying anywhere else than on the first planet, that's for him, it's a final battle, so obviously he's going to go here with the Warlord as well. And uh, if the Warlord's going to come here and he would decide to move the Hero Beams away to just, uh, just uh, counter my Void Pirates, it's still fine. Um, but it looks cool. I have the Sanctified Bolter, I have the Rose Emulators coming in, and the Heavy Flamer with the damage spread, and the Holy Chapel that will definitely load this Heavy Flamer in a second. So I will be able to obliterate those small units that he has. Uh, I have Free Shielder card, I have Our Last Stand to add one Fate Icon on all the units, so. Uh, and obviously from the world of the ability I'm gonna either bring the Sacred Rose Simulator or the Standard Bearer itself. So uh I am quite well secured. I still have one resource here, so I could redeploy something uh here. Uh he is playing the Heralding Hero Beam, so last deployment he really uh didn't work for me. Uh, he still have more command icons, so now he have five. I'm not going to be able to counter his his uh, his uh, commands, but that's fine. Uh, the last resources I can spend is to deploy the attachment from the Munitorum uh, support. So I'm going to add the last cannon to that heavy flamer to make him for free, to just let him uh, to be a little bit more. Uh, invariable uh, for the enemy attacks. Now he don't have anything that could attack for more than two, so I would definitely survive. But I still have a lot of shields, so uh, he put Undying Saint, a really uh, weak uh, unit with the lumbering, so that's not going to change much into into that combat. He's kind of lacking uh, with the strong units. Uh, he have a lot of cheap. I passed. He passed. So we can really commit. Uh, obviously, I'm targeting plan number one. There's no other choice. Um, let's just wait for his decision. Uh, I don't believe he's going to go anywhere else than plan number one as well. Mm, it looks good. I think I'm pretty comfortable here and confident that this is going to go well. Uh, depends what kind of tricks he can still have in his hand, but uh, Heavy Flamer, uh, two Sacred Rose Immolator uh, triggering uh, straight away. Yeah, he did go to plan number one. So i just going to move all my units. Uh, I need to do the reactions from the Sacred Rose Emulators. Uh, but let me just finish the commitment. So all the units come tapped. He's pointing the Sacred Rose Emulators. That's fine. I know I need to do them. So first adding the Fate Icon and dealing one damage up to two units. So I will target those two Chimera tokens. Bang. First dice. Um, second dice, just job done. So the second Rose Emulator is going to add the Fate Icon, it's going to go add one to that unit and one to the Warlord to make him uh, make him more damaged even, so I could get rid of him as soon as possible. It's fine. So uh, I will try to attack with the Heavy Flamer if possible. Yes, that damage goes through so he didn't use any shields. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, yeah. And uh, that was good enough just for the landing to do that damage, uh, really. Uh, he do have a few units that he have ready, so he's going to deal with some attacks, but that's fine. Uh, now I'm going to have the action, it's my initiative, so I'm going to start first. Our last stand will allow me to add one Fate Icon on all the units on the planet, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight fate icons uh, on each unit. Uh, that's absolutely mad. A lot of defense, really, and also my warlords gain the interrupt. Uh, I am actually sharing the uh, icon with the two uh, icons in the victory display of the opponent, so I will reduce the damage on a warlord by one. So cool. Uh, just gonna keep it in play, just to remember about that. Um, 
Okay, and uh, let's see what uh, Eric would do here. So I'm done. Um, not having any more actions here, really. I'm just thinking about the heavy retributor, and he's uh, playing the preemptive barrage for one. I'm thinking, no, he moves it back. Uh, it didn't have a really uh, much sense to play it right now because all his units are ready anyway, and all my units are tapped. So the okay, he played the suppressive fire for the second time instead. So he tapped the Talon Riders to tap my heavy flamer retributor. So the last army unit that I had ready, uh, it just goes into exhausted mode. So now he gains a total advantage uh, in a first combat round. Uh, all my units are tapped. So no action from him, no action from me. It's going to be my attack first. So I'm thinking here, I should really attack with the Warlord first. Or I should just use the Warlord ability and bring the standard bearer into play to make the heavy flamer ready and then just deal one damage to I'm asking for actions pre-ranged uh, he have no actions so I'm gonna add to two uh, well it's not actually on the end of the range it's on the beginning of the range so I'm gonna add two fate icons to my heavy flamer to make him uh, free uh, so he can actually deal after the attack uh, one damage up to three units right now but I also have holy chapel so I can load him even more. So uh, yeah, yeah, I know it's in end of the range. That's fine. Okay, no actions from him. So now I think it's the time for me to use the Holy Chapel. Uh, he has six units, so I need to have at least five fate icons, four or five fate uh, fate icons to really uh, to really just. Uh, I think I'm gonna just add one and try to add additional ones somewhere on a weaker unit to let them stay alive. So I am triggering the Holy Chapel to add four fate icons. So one goes on the heavy flamer, one goes on the rose immolators, and um, second heavy flamer. Yeah, I actually forgot that I have the second one as well. So that's absolutely fine. Yeah, no more actions from him. He didn't use this Holy Chapel, so that's interesting. Um, <coughs> okay, I have an action, and I think time to use my standard bearer uh, so first of all i'm gonna attack with my warlord i will try to kill off that sacred or uh, well, the sakilum shrine god for two attack he made the shielded he didn't use the yeah he did use the preemptive barrage so that was uh, that was wasted that's fine uh, i have uh, the armor or the free uh, shield icon as well so i'm not really worried about any strong unit that he's gonna pull over here uh, really, uh, attack for two from the uh, Sacklim Shrine God goes on to Zealous Cantus. I'm gonna remove the Fate Icon and add one damage, that's absolutely fine. Mm, no action from him after attack. I may have action and I'm gonna use the Wall of Ability to uh, summon the units uh, for free. Uh, I just need to decide from where I need to take the Fate Icons, but I can take one from the Warlord and uh, one from each Sacred Rose, and that's gonna bring the uh, Standard bearer, and that's gonna make my heavy flame retributor ready with the fourth icon. It is GG. So, my opponent recognized that after that attack with four, I'm gonna be able to kill his strongest unit and deal uh, one damage up to four units. Uh, it's just uh, too much for him to really uh, s just, just to stay again. So good game I won I'm really happy about the outcome you can really see how quickly the game can change with the same Celestine how easily is to turn it over and how surprising her actions are uh, the game is so dynamic so uh, he had advantage I regained advantage in the next round and he regained it again even though I was c so comfortable with that Zealous Candace and Herobeam with all those attachments I was so uh, feeling safe uh, against this easy talent rider and uh, weak Herobeam, he just, uh, miraculous intervention, it just changed everything. And the, obviously the ability of the Saint Celestine is absolutely awesome. The standard bearers uh, kind of makes a lot of sense for me to, to, to bring them in. But also free copies of Saint Erica, uh, that's as well uh, really good with the Saint Celestine. Uh, and uh, a 
as well the noble deed which i didn't really use but i had the idea that uh, it could really work well if if you think about it you can really bring saint uh, erica into play attack for five and then use noble deed to deal five damage uh, up to one of the army um, units so uh yeah cool uh my opponent didn't didn't really thought that he's gonna have a chance it doesn't look like he have a chance here obviously the heavy flamers and the Sakura Drove's emulators will just completely obliterate small units. So yeah, uh, that's going to be a t tournament one for me. Uh, really cool. I'm happy about that. I hope uh, you did enjoy the videos and especially that one. Uh, guys, um, probably I made uh, some mistakes during the game. But that's coming from the fact that I'm playing the Saints listing for the first time in my life. Uh, it was pretty risky, but I think uh, this deck worked pretty well. And uh, GG, uh, really well played from Eric as well. He did everything he could. Uh, there was some misplay with the commitment, uh, I think. And also that Fate Icon uh, probably wouldn't change the game as well, but uh, it could give him a little bit more edge. Uh, fine. Thanks, guys, for watching the video. Again, leave your comments uh, underneath, and I hope we can see uh, soon... Uh, in the next tournament. Thanks a lot. See you later.